everyone, so this is Haven Ditko, and I'm going to be doing another tutorial on a really nice item. Actually, I have a wine rack um, that I got from a gotcha, and I thought that this would be a really good project to show you some more ways of using the tools you have. We're going to go into a few more details with the UV image editor and unwrapping. Just like the potted plant series I did, this is about giving beginners a step to go to, something to begin creating to see how the tools work, to get used to them, and kind of planning ahead a little bit. Understanding that things you do now will affect what you get to do later, or what you can't do later, or what you might have to fix or change later. So I want to make this easy for you and give you some of these little guidelines about things that you should probably remember when you're going through your project, even when you're first starting it. So I'm also going to encourage you to watch the whole video. I am going to be doing things at the beginning that I will be changing or explaining as we go along and as we get to these other points in the tutorial um, you'll see where those came into play and why they were important to think about in the beginning. So let me just start going right into it and begin with the base of the uh, wine rack holder or the wine holder. This is just going to be a board on the wall. It's going to have some metal spiral holders on it tipped at an angle and the wine bottles are going to fit in there. So we're going to start with the board and I'm going to use a texture you'll see in a few minutes to uh, do this board. Uh, but it's not going to be, you know, the kind of board everybody wants to use, but I want to show you how you can line things up a little bit. But before we get there, let's go ahead and use Shift A. And if you notice, my scene is in front ortho. That way I know my grid floor is right here at the red line. And my cursor has been centered with Shift plus C. I do that because I want the center of my scene to be where I pull in my object. So Shift plus A brings up the Add Mesh Flyout menu. I'm going to bring in a cube. This cube, by default, is 2 meters, 2 meters, 2 meters, or as we say in Blender, 2 Blender units. This square is a Blender unit. Now if you scroll all the way out, people might think that this is a Blender unit, or if you scroll in further, they might think something smaller is a Blender unit, but a default cube will actually tell you uh, which one it is. Alright, so again, um, I kind of lost my place a little bit with answering the telephone. This is a 2x2x2 two by two by two meter box. This is not the size that we want our box to be. So I'm going to go back into front. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to lift it up to the floor or to the grid line here, okay? And that's just because when I do camera around, I like it to be on top of that grid floor. So I'm going to move it one blender unit. And as I said, this is a blender unit. So I want to move it up one, and I move it up by the origin. So I tell the origin to move up one full Blender unit. So G for grabbing, Z for the Z axis, one on the number pad for one Blender unit, and the Enter key to confirm it. There we go. Now this is too big for uh, the board or a plank that I want on the wall. I think it's the right height, but as far as width and depth go, it's definitely too big. So I'm going to scale this down in two directions. I cannot tell Blender to scale it down on the X and the Y at the same time, but I can tell Blender to scale it down on all the axes except for the Z axis. So I'm going to do that with S for scale. I'm going to hold my Shift button, press the Z, and when I do that, you'll see that I've got the red and the green axis lines showing. That means it's going to scale in those directions only. I want to scale this down to about one-fourth of the size that it is. And when we work with Blender and we're sizing things, we do it by percentages. So if I want this to be one-fourth of its size, I will size it to 0.25%. Uh, percent. So that makes it one-fourth. So dot on the number pad, 25, 
an enter key to confirm it. Now I've got a plank that is half a meter, half a meter, and half a meter, um, or just from the side to side and front to back. It's also still too long from the front to the back. So I'm going to scale this now to, again, 25% of its current size. So I'm going to hit S and Y and 0.25, Enter. And now I have what I think is a good size for my board. One of the problems that we're going to have, and it's not a real big problem, but when it comes to unwrapping, Blender knows that when this cube came into our scene, it was 2, 2, and 2 meters. We resize that. So the default scale here is no longer all ones. When this was a cube, all of these were one, signifying that the cube was in its default state size. So we want to tell Blender to make this its new default size. Pretend like it never came in at 222. Um, pretend like it came in at this size, like we never scaled it. So we want to make this its new default size, and we can do that by hitting Control plus A and bringing up, bringing up the Apply menu. On the Apply menu, we have the choice to apply scale. Make this our default scale size. I'm not going to do that yet, but if I did do this now, you would see all of these numbers, although Z is the right one, it would take these to 1.00. I'm not going to do that just yet because I want to show you in the UV image editor something that can happen when you don't um, change the defaults on this or change this to the default, apply the scale. So all I did was open up a brand new window. I'm going to hit the little box down here icon and this brings up my editor type. Basically, editor type is what kind of a window are we going to use. Well, in this case, we want to use a UV image editor. And this is where we work on our UVs. We can preview our textures. We can move things around to get our textures just as we want. The only reason that we unwrap at all is for texturing. So we have a window to help us work with that here. I need to put my box into edit mode. Let me just scrunch this up a little bit for right now. And I'm going to use an unwrap, which is just a normal unwrap. I'm going to hit U on my keyboard, and you'll see my UV mapping menu come up. The unwrap menu is the only menu, or the only choice on this menu, that works with marked seams. What are marked seams? They are where we tell Blender to make sure to cut our seam, our mesh apart. It doesn't literally take this and break it apart for us, but it makes a 2D representation in this window um, as if we are unfolding this, almost like a piece of origami. If you have a piece of paper, you know how to fold that up to make a box. Well, we need to do this in reverse. We need to unfold it and make it flat. So we need to tell Blender where to cut. Well, not a real cut, but, you know, a cut, virtual cut. I am in vertex select mode, and I'm going to say to Blender, well, I want you to cut along this edge here. I want you to cut along the back edge and the side here. So I have to select these three edges so that I can tell Blender that's where I want you to cut. So if I select these vertices, because that selects the edges, you'll see that I get this edge selected as well. I don't want this edge cut. So what I'll do instead is go into Control plus Tab to pull up my Mesh Select Mode menu, and I'm going to choose Edges from here. This allows me to select those edges without getting this front one selected. I'm then going to use Control e and I can choose to mark my seam. When you mark your seam, you're going to see that these here have a red tint to them, a red color. When you go into Control e though, mark sharp, if you do this by accident, 
often it can be mistaken as being a marked seam. So let me select this edge here, control E and mark sharp. And you'll see that, you know, if these ones um, are all like this, you would think that this was marked as well. This will not work for blenders unwrapping. So we just want to make sure that when we use control E, we don't use mark sharp. Instead, we use mark seam. The good thing about this is that I also have clear sharp. So I can change that. I can fix that. And you'll see it is no longer marked at all. Let's go ahead and finish choosing what we want to uh, have as marked seams. So this is the front of the board. This is like folding the top of the box up. We can select the edges on the bottom, the same ones that we did on the top, and we can mark those as well. And now it's like folding the bottom of the box open. Then we can choose this one side seam, Control E, Mark Seam, and that will help us to unfold it flat. Nothing will show up in the image editor if it is not selected and if it is not unwrapped. So now if I select all of this, you don't see it here. But when I choose U and I use my unwrap method, you'll see that it comes out in this window now. If I deselect all this, it disappears. It needs to be, in most cases, it needs to be selected and unwrapped to be seen. This is where that default sizing thing comes into play. Right now, we have six sides of a box, which is exactly what we've got here. But in this window, you'll notice they're all the same size. And this is not actually what we want for our board. Because we may have planks in it or patterns in it, um, this is going to give us very different results. Along the top, you'll see that we have a very, oh, this is actually the top here. Along the top here, you will see that we've got a square. So the texture that lays in this area is going to get stretched way out because this is a stretched area. This texture here will get scrunched up very small. It's hard to tell exactly which one is which, but you can tell that this is not the same as this one. It is different. What you may not have noticed as well is that when I go to U and I choose Unwrap, look up here at the top of my screen. I'm going to get a small warning. U, Unwrap, whoops, I have to select it all. Look at me. And when you unwrap it again, this will be replaced. You don't have to delete this. You don't have to clear the seams. You don't have to do anything like that. So unwrap, and here it says, object has non-uniform scale. Unwrap, unwrap will operate on um, a different uh, scale level. Okay, so it's operating on the idea that this is 2 meters, 2 meters, and 2 meters. So let's go back into object mode because you need to be in object mode in order to apply the scale. Again, Watch my scale here. We're not affecting the dimension or the size of it, only its default scale. So Control plus A, and I'm going to choose the scale. You'll see that those switch to ones. When I unwrap it now, I will not get that little warning up here, and my unwrapping will look different. You and unwrap. So now we have something that is much more true to what we've got. We have long, thin sides. We have these short um, tops and bottoms. So the back and the front are actually much bigger than they were before when they were just little squares. And I think that that's a really great unwrapping. Now, the thing that we want to think about before we start um, uh, making this um, uh, any further modeling it we want to keep in mind about our unwrapping. At some point, I'm going to want to put some character up here. I'm going to want to put some, some um, maybe some cuts or some gouges to make this look a little less perfect. If I were to add a, a, um, 
edge loop here. I almost forgot what I was going to call it. I can add an edge loop here so I can hit um, uh, left mouse click to confirm one and I can move it over here and you'll see that when I go back into the unwrapping it has added itself right here. It has added itself though to the center which is if I do control Z and I do control R again you'll see that it shows up in the center of that. When I left mouse click and I move it, it still comes in as, as if it was created right here. So this is where it shows up on our UVs. And this is okay um, as long as, and actually, do you see, I got two of them there because I didn't uh, control Z enough. And you can see that that actually is a little bit better, but there's no way that this is the same kind of space or sizing that this is. So what I would suggest doing before you go too far into unwrapping something is here we have our basic unwrap and that's good. Now I'm going to add my control R, my edge loops and I'm going to just alt right click on them and um, move them around where I want them. I happen to know that I want to put a little bit of character, a um, little bit of um, distress in this side. So I'm just going to move those over there. And that's good enough for me. If I want to put some distressing down here as well, I can do it on the opposite side and just add more edge loops here. Or I can just use this side. But in order to solve the issue that we have about these not being placed in the right place, you see they're all evenly spaced out here. Because I marked these seams, they still are there, they still work. So I can hit U and unwrap, and you'll see that it's fixed them all for me. This unwrapping is actually upside down. Because if I look at it from the front, oh actually this is the right way. I was working on it from the back view. You see, you should always take a look at your arrows to see which way they're facing. So actually I'm going to take all of these and I'm just going to move them over here, which is easy enough to do. Hit U and un um, all, U and unwrap again. And now I have exactly what I was hoping to have. It's perfect. Unwrapping this box first, uh, marking the seams for it at least, it's a lot easier sometimes than if I would have to come in here and I would have had to select each one of these little ones on their own, on the top and on the bottom. Um, but adding these edge loops does not change those marked seams. Okay, so we're all good to go. With this unwrapped, I can come into this window and I can just go from my media library or my computer library of images and with this all selected, I can drag and drop an image right in here. And so I'm going to do that now. I just have a, a very simple little wood one. So I'm going to drag and drop it right in here. You'll know that it's associated with these UVs because this is going to blow up. So watch. It gets really big on you. And I don't know exactly why Blender does that, but it does it all the time. If I come over here in the U3D viewport and I come to this little button which is called the U viewport shading and I choose texture, you'll see my texture comes out of my cube. You can see it a lot better if I go into object mode. This is sideways. This isn't exactly what I wanted. I wanted these boards to go up and down. So this window is nice because not only do we unwrap here, um, you know, just this plain unwrapping or simple, we can adjust these in this window as well. So this is the top, this is the bottom, and this is the back. I'm going to hit R for rotate, and I'm going to change this 90 degrees, and you can see it changing on my object. I can type in 9, 0, point, and enter key. What we want to do here, and we want to grab this, and we want to pull it over into this window. 
Now it might be a little hard to get it exactly, you know, to both edges lined up perfectly. You can see here it's got a little bit of a gap and here it's overhanging a little bit. We have another little tool that can help in some cases and this one is actually one of the cases where it does help. We can come to the UVs button and choose constrain to image bounds. If I turn this on, my unwrapping when I move this will be forced to stay within the boundaries of this texture space. So G for grab and you'll see that I can't move it beyond any of the sides or the top or the bottom now. So I can go ahead and put this about where I want it and I am looking in this window to see where I want that. I think I would like this edge to be on the corner, this dark edge. So I'm going to grab this again and I'm just going to move it a little bit and I have that right on the edge, right there. That's good for me. This one you can see is off. When I move the whole thing, of course, even this side gets adjusted. But if I go to adjust this side, if I move this around so this is adjusted, then the rest of it would be off. So we can actually just move parts of this. If I remember that this is the front and this right here is the side, you can see, let me just unselect that. This here, this here is that side. And I know that because this is the front again, remember? The side and then the back. And I can move this so that it fits uh, this where I want it to. I'm going to take all of this here. Um, yeah, I think I'll take all of that. I'm going to hit B for border and select this. I'm going to hit G for grab, Y for the axis, and I'm going to use my down arrow just to nudge this a little bit. And you see that as I nudged it, it moved this over for me. Do you see that? So G for grab, and just I can nudge it and get that right where I want it. And I think that's pretty good for those boards. This one here looks a little narrow, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. What we could do is move these over a little bit if we wanted to. The back does not line up with the top, so we want to change that. So let's go ahead and choose the back of our board. And we want this line here. Well, first we want to move this line. And watch what happens on the board. So G and that's the other side. Border, let me just select all these. And now if I hit G and Y, and when I nudge that around, you'll see I can pull this one way or another. And right there, I am pretty well lined up on that. And I move just these so that the rest of it isn't affected or messed up. And now my bottom lines up perfectly too. So that looks exactly like I want it to. Now what I can do with the edges selected is I can choose this edge. I can bring it down a little bit. Just give it a little bit of a distressed look. There we go. You can do that again. Like I said, you can do that for the bottom if you want to. You can even put in a few edge loops going sideways and you can move this edge in, give it a little bit more. Now, some of you might say, well, why did this edge loop get all crooked? When you do an edge loop, it goes exactly halfway from one end of the edge to the other because this end of the edge and this one are a lot shorter than this one or this one and they're of course different through all of these you get this effect here. These, these um, points, if I go into vertex select are exactly halfway between the top and the bottom. So because these are different 
distances from here, you'll get these to be different distances. I can come here and hit S for scale, and it's on the y of the z-axis that they're all different. This is uh, higher on the z-axis than this one, lower than this one, this one's higher than that one. If I do Alt right click on here, I can hit S and Z and then just even them out with zero and enter. So now they are all even. And there we go. We've got that uh, center one here as well. So that's good. We got just a little bit of a dent there. And I'm actually going to grab these four and I'm going to move them in a little bit just so I have a little bit more of a defined uh, angle here. I don't want this too distressed, but you can see that you can really go uh, pretty nuts with this board and do all kinds of things to it. You could even do an edge loop um, in this direction, Control plus R, and you can make this side of the board. Let me, let me go back into Edge, select with Control Tab. I can grab these and I can actually move those in as well and give it even more character. I can take this one and move it down and give that a little bit of extra dimension as well. So like I said, you can like um, make this as you know distressed or as straight or as anything that you like, but here now you have a perfect unwrapping for it. Um, it's always good to be able to bring in the texture that you want to use for it um, and that way you don't get these really big surprises and have to come back in the blender and change anything, everything. But that's the first part of the video, or the tutorial. Uh, so get your board done, have fun with it, pick out a texture that you like, adjust your UVs uh, to match the, the actual image that you brought in, have a little bit of fun with it, mess around with uh, your edge loops and adding them and stuff. Remember, if you add too many edge loops and you move them up and down too much, re-unwrap it, and that first box unwrapping, the mark seams, will um, remain intact. They will be, remain usable, and so it makes things a lot easier. Anyhow, have fun with it. Uh, please subscribe. Share the channel or the video with people so that they can join in on the fun with us. And I will see you guys for the next part really soon. Have fun.